Everyone knows that China is into hacking. The PRC has a bigger hacking program than that of every major nation combined. But now the hackers have been hacked. An online dump of documents from a private security firm. Thousands of pages of documents from hackers in China have been leaked online. These documents reveal just how it all works. Some of it is a little bit odd. Some of it is high quality office drama. And some of it is deadly serious. This is a story about cyber espionage. And it starts in an unexpected place. The day before Australia Day last year, Andrew Phelan was in an interview room at Moorabbin Police Station in Melbourne. Because you first up in custody. Yeah. Um, did you want to call a friend? I haven't been to right now. Yeah. He was feeling confused and upset, but also curious about what exactly was going on here. This is a little, this okay. is kind of so surreal. Less than two hours earlier, he'd been at home getting the house ready so that his terminally ill mother could return home. You know, and my, my biggest concern in my life right now is getting my mum to walk. His mum had breast cancer and advanced dementia and needed a lot of care. Uh, I've, I've been just, going out and feeding her dinner just, every day. Yeah. Just as he'd been expecting the delivery of a hospital bed for his mum, four armed police turned up with an arrest warrant and a search warrant. I've confiscated an iPhone 13 Pro mobile phone. We've also uh, seized a laptop. They took him to the police station to question him about whether he'd threatened to kill someone. Andrew was 56 and had never been arrested before. He'd spent his career working in the healthcare industry across Asia and is now a regular commentator on Sky News about the Asia Pacific. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty frank. I mean, I don't hold back. The thing he mainly doesn't hold back about is the Chinese Communist Party. It's a disaster. On Sky News, he's very critical of the CCP. I think Xi Jinping is the most dangerous man in the world, m much more so than Putin. The police officers alleged that Andrew Phelan had sent an extremely violent and graphic email to a young journalist, which I'll spare you the details of. But as Andrew told the cops... That, that, that email doesn't even make sense. Not only did Andrew deny writing it, he also said... I've never heard of it. <laughs> And I would never, ever, in a month of Sundays, use that kind of language yeah. to a woman or anybody else. Yeah. When he saw the email, he figured out what was happening. That's not my email. I've never seen, never used that email before. Andrew is certain the email was the work of the Chinese government, an effort to scare him off from criticising the Chinese Communist Party. He's seen similar cases before. Somebody set this up. The police agreed. Andrew was driven home, had his stuff returned to him, and the case was dropped. Today's been a harrowing ordeal, and I've not enjoyed it. For several years, the Chinese government has been conducting an aggressive global espionage operation to gather data on and intimidate people it thinks are its enemies, like Andrew Phelan. The engine room of that operation is thousands of cyber spies, hackers, stealing and harvesting data from the internet. But until last month, it was unclear how all that worked. Now, an unprecedented leak of Chinese data has cracked open that black box. Today, the secrets of Chinese cyber espionage finally revealed. I'm Matt Bevan, and this is If You're Listening. So how did this leak happen? Well, it started at a tech company called iSoon. The offices are in quite a nice building in the Chinese city of Chengdu. Modern, but with a traditional Chinese feel. Inside, it's white and clean, there's pot plants. At night, when the office is closed, glowing green lights come on, which make it look very futuristic. But the 70 or so people who work there aren't happy. They're worried the company is struggling. They think they're overworked, their pay is too low, and they don't know if they'll still have a job by the end of the year. They're angry about the CEO, Mr Wu, buying an expensive car instead of giving them all a raise. They don't like their middle manager, Mr Zhao, who often gets angry at them. They're disgruntled. We know all this because it appears that one of them had such a distinct lack of gruntle that they downloaded a big trove of files from the company's servers and posted them all up online. Uh-oh. Now, the question is, 
Why is this interesting to anyone beyond Mr. Zhao, who is presumably currently very angry? Classic Mr. Zhao. Well, the documents published online show that instead of being a company that builds security systems, iSoon is in fact a company that <laughs> hacks into security systems. iSoon is a group of cyber criminals who are contracted to the Chinese government. This is the first time that we've been given a clear idea of how China hires people to carry out its hacking operations, and it's fascinating. My understanding is that the Chinese government not unlike the Russian government, is not doing this themselves, but are protecting those who are doing it. So the Chinese government isn't hacking people itself. They're employing contractors, a classic public-private partnership project. Now, this is not like the movies. Nobody's hacking into the mainframe in a dark room wearing a hoodie. And that's because hacking in the modern sense is more about trickery than brute force. Some companies and government agencies do have watertight, impenetrable computer networks. But even the highest security computer networks have one key vulnerability. Humans. Humans can be tricked, humans can be lazy, and humans like convenience. Let's start with laziness. A very important element of cybersecurity is software updates. When's the last time that you updated the software on your Wi-Fi router? Did you click skip this update or remind me later when that annoying thing popped up on your desktop this morning? Yeah? Well, that leaves you vulnerable to hackers. That type of activity goes on every day, everywhere around the world. iSoon has been able to penetrate dozens of secure networks by sliding through a gap in an outdated piece of software. So that's laziness. Let's talk about convenience. If you built a computer network in a bank vault, installed a high quality firewall, made sure all the software was regularly updated, and only allowed highly trained security conscious people to log on, you would be fine. But you can't do that. All of your staff need to be able to access the network in a way that's convenient, at a desk, at home, or while traveling. And that can leave you vulnerable. So, iSoon has developed a USB hacking device that looks like a power bank, you know, one of those battery things you can buy at the train station to recharge your phone. And then they just leave it somewhere and hope that someone interesting uses it. During a stopover in Hong Kong, an Australian businessman finds a spare USB key in his hotel room. Curious, he inserts the key into his laptop. So plug it in and it uploads iSoon's virus into your machine giving them access to your stuff. By the time he arrives in Australia, his computer is infected. But physically leaving dodgy USB devices around is a lot of work. James Bond stuff. Much easier to exploit the third vulnerability, human gullibility. It just takes an email. Hackers can take full control of networks within a few days. The entry point is often a link in an email. Now we all know that you shouldn't click a link in a dodgy looking email, right? We all know what spam is. Come on, iSoon, tell Mr. Zhao to chill out. That's never gonna work. My favorite is one that went to a big US security company and the subject line was next year's bonuses. Sorry, did you just say bonuses? And they had in it a, uh, a spreadsheet that if you clicked on it, you would see next year's bonuses. Of course, you didn't see next year's bonuses. What you did is uh, download malware onto the company network. I may have fallen for that. The iSoon leak has blown the lid off how the Chinese cyber espionage industry works. And that's the crazy thing about it. It's an industry. Their business model appears to have two main elements. Being hired by the government to hack something, sure. But also just trawling the internet hoping to stumble upon valuable information that they can then sell to the government. But the work is actually boring. So boring. China has somehow turned the punk, anarchic world of hackers into a job like any other government contractor. They have to make PowerPoint presentations about how their services work to show to potential government clients. They have to deal with government customers that are increasingly picky. If you don't deliver exactly what they asked for, they won't pay up. 
Sometimes they can't find a buyer for something they've found. At one stage, they found information about the Secretary General of NATO, Jens Stoltenberg, this guy. A time of growing geopolitical competition, regional instability, terrorism, cyber attacks. Yeah, that guy's data got stolen. But apparently, nobody was interested in paying for it. Rude. To stay in business, they have to undercut their competitors, which means making less money for each job. A local council in southern China wanted private information about the Vietnamese traffic police. I soon provided it for $15,000. That would barely pay for a new set of rims for Mr Wu's flashy new car. In 2020, when one of their competitors was sanctioned by the FBI... These for-profit criminal activities took place with the tacit approval of the government of the People's Republic of China. The Isun team celebrated and went out for beers. They thought it was hilarious. By the way, the day that this Isun leak dropped was a bad day to be a beer in Shenzhen. I mean, a lot of thirsty hackers that day, I reckon. The point is, Isun are not the only guys doing this. There is a massive competitive industry devoted to scouring the internet for anything interesting and then seeing if anyone in the Chinese government wants it. With the help of artificial intelligence, the contents of entire email servers are downloaded, translated into Chinese, sifted for interesting data, and then shopped around. Huge databases are built of names, emails, postal addresses, Twitter accounts, phone numbers, maintained by a bunch of bored, grumpy guys who push through the monotony by losing big chunks of their paychecks to each other in Mahjong. Everything you need to help you write a threatening email that's convincing enough to induce an arrest by Victoria Police is sitting on a server somewhere in China. If your English isn't up to scratch, AI could even help write the email for you. It's enough to make anyone nervous. It makes Andrew Phelan nervous. Well, there was a possibility that um, one day there might be a rock through the window or something of that nature. Perhaps naively, I didn't imagine it would take the form that it did, and the, in, through the form that it did, what that showed me was that I'd been being watched and monitored for quite some time. He says his Chinese friends were mortified by what happened. One of them, his reaction was absolute outrage and a little bit of embarrassment that this could happen uh, to me in Australia. I've had other Chinese friends say, you know, you need to be a little bit careful and that sort of thing. So I think that diaspora is increasingly wary of these tools and these capabilities and they're, they're self-censoring. But he's not interested in self-censoring. There's a saying, uh, tell China's story well. And you'll hear uh, that, that repeated by various diplomats around the world. Now, um, a, as a proud Australian patriot, I um, am interested in telling the truth in what's in Australia's interest. And th this stuff's not going away anytime soon, so we got to uh, stay on the ball and, um, and stay vigilant. We all know that China has the ability to spy on people inside their own borders. But the size of this industry broadens their reach to anyone. Anyway, I've got to go. Someone's just emailed me a spreadsheet of next year's bonuses. I'm going to check this out.